Hey, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. I figured before I started watch work today, I'd give you a few more close-ups. So here I've got a very small Russian watch movement. And this is the lower plate from that Russian watch movement. And I've got a piece of Rodico in my hand here. So I'm going to just dab these jewels to see if I can clean them up a bit. And look at that. I removed whatever that was. So I'm just leaving this in place here. And someone recommended that I use a puck, but instead I just used a, uh, a, a, a bench plate. So here I'm going to just give you an idea how small this is. So this is an oiler. So I'm just going to bring that oiler in. There's the oiler right there. So you can see that I'm up pretty darn close here. And I'm going to move it down as close as I can, see if I can get that oiler in focus. That's about as close I can, as I can get it, and it won't focus, but look at the size of that oiler. So you're looking at an extreme close-up here. So these are the teeth of a center wheel of a size 18 watch. Again, there's the oil, oiler for reference. And it's not the hockey, game, hockey team, the oilers, okay? Just in case you're confused. And there is a tooth from that wheel or gear, right? So I'm just tapping it and it's moving a bit, but that's the tooth. So that's zoomed out again. And let's just zoom in and see what that looks like. And in case you know zero about watchmaking, I'm going to get a needle and do the exact same thing with a needle. So this is the head of a needle. Let me get the uh, this head next to that tooth again, like I did before. And this is a sharpened needle. So I'm going to move this in a bit like this and try to situate it so that you can see it really well. And I'm going to try to put it next to the head of this. There we go. And this was a needle I took and I sharpened it significantly. And this is how thick it would normally be. That's a fine sewing needle. Yeah. So you're looking at micro work. So if you're going to do work on repairing a watch uh, gear tooth, you're going to be at this level of, of uh, zoom when you're working on that. Okay, these are screws that are in a balance, a watch balance, and it's actually a watch balance that would be similar to a size 6 pocket watch um, or just a, a large watch. Um, and these are the screws and so they're screwed into the actual rim of the balance. And again, I'm going to bring in my tweezers so you can see the size, the, uh, the difference in size. So these are my tweezers. Now these, uh, you'd think these tweezers would be exactly together at the end, but these tweezers I use for grabbing screws and moving small parts, and they're brass, but they're um, exceptionally good tweezers. And this is zoomed out right now. So again we're going to zoom in on these screws and I'm going to try to get a really close up on this screw and I have to move it ever so slightly. There's the screw head there and then focus it and there we go. A little bit hard to focus when it's like that and then of course just like I did before if you look at the end of my tweezers. That's what you're looking at. So if I'm grabbing the screw here by a special tweezers you use to remove these screws, it's very, very tricky work. It's like brain surgery, I think. Now here's a picture of that same balance and there's the roller table and there's the U in the roller table and you can see how small that is again and that's um, again I'll just bring my oiler next to that there's the oiler right next to that jewel and I'm going to try to show this to you sideways but there's the uh, the the tip of the bounce staff, the roller table, and the impulse jewel, and that's zoomed out, folks. So if I zoom in on this, 
Oh, actually, that zoomed in. So we're good. If I zoom out on it, then you've got this kind of look here. I'll wait till the camera stabilizes here. And there we go. That's what it looks like. So when I zoomed in, this is what you were seeing. So now I'm going to try to hold this sideways. This could be very interesting. And there's a shot of the balance itself and the balance staff and the roller table. And it's a double roller table in this case. And the impulse jewel. And let me see if I can focus any better than that. I think that's about it. And you can see the pivot on the end and how small that pivot is. That's a super small pivot. I'm going to try pointing again with my my needle that I carved down. It's about the smallest pointing object I have. And I'll see if this helps at all. But you can see the picture. I just want to make sure you know it's live. And there's that pivot right there. And there's the jewel right there. And this is pointing at this with a need with a needle. Now recognizing that this is a a small balance. It's a, probably like I said the size of a S6 pocket watch balance. So that's it right there. So so you can see that jewel sitting in in that spot right there. It's a impulse jewel, kind of a half moon jewel, um, but pretty cool close up there of this. And here we have the escapement wheel teeth once again and I can move closer again so you can see the uh, condition of that tooth now from a bird's eye view when you're just using glasses this stuff looks very fine and polished but as you zoom into the metal you see that uh, it's not as fine and polished as you think and that's my little metal blench, bench, bench block say that three times fast my blench block um, that this is resting on. You can see the marks on that block are very significant. So that's that the tooth of an escapement. And it's not, it's the escapement wheel. I was corrected earlier by a viewer saying the escapement includes the escapement wheel, the uh, balance, the roller tables, the whole thing, right? So that's the whole escapement. But this is an escapement wheel. So, and that's one of the teeth, or feet as I like to call it. So this is the index marker of a very fine dial of a watch. Just to give you an idea of how rough it looks. And here we have the arms, or the, the hour and minute hands of a Hamilton size 16 pocket watch. Um, the top hand would be the minute hand, the bottom hand would be the hour hand. But you can see how rough this looks when you get into the center when that hand is actually pushed on to the uh, to the center to the the uh, cannon pinion that's sticking up and then the hour wheel that this goes over so the hour hand would go over the hour wheel and then the cannon pinion would go through that hour wheel and the minute hand would be attached to that so you can see how rough the metal or the material looks on this watch let's have a look at the face oh another note this is why when you're you're burnishing the hour wheel or the minute wheel to fit it on properly or you're trying to make the hole smaller you're working with metal and it looks very rough at this level um, it's not it doesn't have the accuracy that you would expect um, nowadays but back then I think uh, the accuracy was in the machining and the accuracy of the machines tolerances and here we have some of the painted on le lettering on the watch and again, this is a, an old vintage Hamilton pocket watch. Um, and when you look at this from a distance, there's no issue. Uh, but when you look at it up close, you're like, where's the H? <laughs> I guess it's those two lines put together make the H. So it's very interesting. Let me just move this over just a bit. There's the H. And then the second letter is the A. And you can see the H and the A on Hamilton. So you've got the H is comprised of this letter, or marking, plus this marking. And then the second letter is the A, which is this is the A. So that's a written A. So that's Hamilton. And that's up fairly close, I think. But uh, I'm sure if I can get closer here. So there's the lettering there. We just crease the light. And now I have to zoom it 
adjust the zoom. So there's the paint on the dial. That's what it looks like. That's the accuracy of the paint on that dial, which is pretty cool stuff, I think. And there we have the second hand, or the seconds hand, uh, in the lower subdial of the watch. And again, you can see how rough it looks up close. And again, this is not as close as I can go. So if I were to zoom right in like this, and I'll try to center this with my bare hands, my bare knuckle hands. There we go. And then we'll zoom in, or we'll, we'll focus this beast. And there it is, focused. So you can see that how rough everything looks up close. That's what I find amazing about this. Even the lines around the circle, around the pip, or the pipe, I guess, that the that's, that's tapped down onto that second hand, which is the fourth wheel pivot of the uh, watch. And there are the knurlings on the uh, crown. Um, and again, up close, it looks pretty, uh, pretty small. And that's not even zoomed in, like I said. I can zoom in on those knurlings, and you can see what that would look like. And there it is there. So any adjustment you'd have to do to a watch using this microscope, it makes it ever that so much accurate. Let me correct my English here. It makes it so much more accurate. Thanks. And these are the inner threads of the bezel, the screw down case top on this watch, or the or the bezel. So these are the inner inner threads of that, and they're zoomed out. Again, zooming in would give me a view of this, and you can see how much dirt there is um, between those threads. You'd think there'd be less dirt, but there's not. There's more. So that's the dirt in there. So when you're cleaning those, you're trying to get that dirt out of those threads. This is the center wheel uh, setting and jewel of this same watch, of the same Hamilton watch. And again, you can use the microscope to examine the jewel settings to make sure that, uh, that they're clean and, and there's, they're deep, dirt free. So as I back this in or back this, I'm effectively seeing the, the pivot of the center wheel coming through. And there's a jewel setting set in place in that watch. And here's the upper cap jewel for the upper balance staff. Or the upper balance. This is the uh, cap jewel that goes over the jewel, the upper jewel for the uh, for the balance balance staff. So you can see again how rough that is, and and you can see a, a witness mark on the side. So when me or someone else did maintenance on this thing, I'll just point at the witness mark. You can see right there. There's a witness mark. And that's so when you put this jewel back, you can do your best to try to put that back in the exact same location that it was in before. I'm going to zoom in on the hairspring for a second, and I'm going to zoom in on the, the balance, maybe the meantime screws of the balance. So that's the rim of the balance, and there's one of the screws going into that rim. And you can see how fine these screws are made. And as I zoom in here, See if I can get the crazy zoom on the threads here. Let me just move this into place and adjust my focus. And there are the threads of that screw. You can see how everything looks so dirty in a watch when you look at it up close. And this watch, I can't remember whether I cleaned this watch or not, but it looks so dirty. Someone told me that the dirt is gathered by static electricity that draws the uh, created by the watch that draws the dust into that watch so when you say you want the watch cleaned this is why because over a period of maybe five years the watch gets incredibly dirty from static electricity drawing the dust into the watch and as promised here's a close-up of the hairspring again you're demagnetizing the hairspring you're cleaning it to get all the gum off the hairspring it'll stick together if there's any dirt or any oil on that hairspring and then that will increase your amp your uh, your speed of your watch 
and it'll affect the amplitude of the watch considerably. But there's the hairspring. If I zoom out, I think I'm pretty close here, yeah. Let me zoom out and then I'll show you where that is on the watch. And there you go. That's the hairspring right there. So at this level of zoom, this is like as far out as I can go. This is where I'm trying to work with this watch. And and I'll just let me just play with the hairspring for a second. And you'll see how just nudging that hairspring will cause it to move. When I'm doing work on pocket watches, sometime I'll see if they're if the spring will stick together. And just by nudging it like this, and if it's magnetic, that spring will stick together, stick to the, the leaf. One leaf will stick to the other leaf. And the other thing I look for is that hairspring, if it's not level, or it's not down far enough, it'll touch the balance cock. So. But this is a close-up of that hairspring, and it's going through the regulator pins that are up top here. So, so I think that's it for today. This is my close-ups. If you got any requests for uh, any close-ups you want me to do, on the watches or anything else then let me know i remember years ago i looked at the the eye of a fly i think it was and it was just really impressive up close so, so that's it i'm jd welcome to my channel and please subscribe please hit like please share it with other people i think i'm going to go fix a few watches now mm -hmm.